afternoon, everyone. Thank you. It is May. No, nope. July 16th. Wow, that is not right at all. I'm not even close. Um, we're all here to talk about the two presumptive cases that have been identified at Mary River Mine. Minister Hicks is going to give us kind of a general overview of the situation. Dr. Patterson is going to go into a bit more detail, and then we can go into questions. Thank you. It is not May. It is July. <laughs> no, that good. Lumi, July 16th. 50? Thanks. And if I was to travel back in time, I think I'd go past May. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today we are reporting two presumptive cases of COVID-19 in Nunavut, both at the Mary River Mine. Two out-of-territory workers at the mine have tested positive, and while we wait the confirmed results from the South, we must treat these as presumptive. I'll let Dr. Patterson speak in more detail about the circumstances, but most importantly, I want Nunavut to know that the risk of any spread of COVID-19 in our communities because of these presumptive cases is very low. These individuals recently entered the territory and had no contact with any Nunavut. I've said this before, but Mary River Mine is not accessible by the surrounding communities right now, and no Nunavut residents are working at the mine at this time. We will continue to monitor the situation closely and will support Baffin Land if needed. All current public health measures in the territory remain unaffected. Thank you. Good afternoon. As Minister Hicks stated, two presumptive test results of COVID-19 have been detected at the Mary River Mine. <clears throat> These individuals and all identified contacts are in isolation and are currently asymptomatic. Additional swabs have been sent south for confirmatory testing and results should be available early next week. If the additional testing yields one or more positive results, these may be considered Nunavut's first confirmed cases of COVID-19. Presently, there is no evidence of COVID-19 transmission occurring at the mine site. Unusakut, <laughs> We have, however, identified a link between these presumptive cases and the presumptive positive announced on July 2nd. These individuals previously came into contact with one another while outside of the territory. This information provides a potential connection between these presumptive cases, but it does not necessarily indicate that transmission occurred during this contact. 
However, evidence suggests that transmission occurred outside of the mine site and outside of the territory. We are closely monitoring the situation to ensure the safety and well-being of on-site staff. Again, we are confident that all the necessary precautions have been taken to minimize, to the greatest extent possible, the risk that posed to Nunavomiut. Kisaneli, naluna si si mayugo taka toka ang anaham ng ini taka pasagaya ujut amalo taka pasagaya ulo tu naluna ilaw si mayugo July two ng tilugo. Taman na tukili taka pasagaya uju katisid ni reyang ita taka nuna vusila tani tilugo suli. Kisaneli taka toka ang anahatu ni reyali pasagaya ulo tunut. Kisaneli naluna si guta ng ito taman na ito lo ta ni reyang ita yung makati yung minu tilugo. Kisiani sakit tu hal semua itu mana itu lu tahu ni meningat ujaran ni abu silatani amalu nuna vut silatani itu tak mini ujangi nalu nak ngitung kisiani itu mana kau sak pelang ini nanti abu tak kuat tanah tu mihun lagi kanu mihun lagi lu ujaran ni abu mitu kena yak tingit amalu nang nalu ngitung kata mak kuat kanu ilu kau tahu semua itu sapu meja uti senang mod tak kuat pikun nana nak patin ulur kau nak tu mihun uti teli langa juga nuna vut mihun. To reiterate, Nunavut's current public health measures and travel through the common travel areas remain unaffected. No one wants to have COVID-19 and no one wants to spread COVID-19. However, every contact that occurs carries a degree of risk. We all have a part to play in keeping Nunavut safe and I urge all Nunavut to take this responsibility seriously. Wash your hands, practice social distancing, stay home when you are sick, and be kind to one another. Thank you. Excuse me. Kano ho sa kaya kanya lugo man na yung nuna bumian ay hanang itulog na mumalit tao kati tao yut. Ang malawaw lahat tao na ang nangita makuwaw labiw katao na ato sulat tao tao sa mga ito. Kina tuwing nakdumadyo ang nangyinti tao mga imat. Ang malaw. Sa maksigo mayo ka kani kina tuwing na may tamat sa mga nangyinti ang nangyinti. Kasi ano yung tama ko akati yao si may ila akati yao yung minilimat ulo ka na tumi yung nangata ila o kato yung nakto na yung yung na vumi ulo ka na tumi yung sunagit ayaw to kaya kanya kakano na vumi limat taman na isumalo ti yung kulugo agasiwa sa katalogit ino katigi kanilo at ila katalogit ang ekasi magubilo ang ekas ila kanilo magubilo ang ekasi matuin na katalogit ang malo tunga na katigi sa katalosi o yan nami Ken Triscoll, EPTN National News. Uh, Dr. Patterson, there was a presumptive case earlier, and now there are more presumptive cases at the same location. Uh, what makes you so confident that there isn't transmission going on at the mine? Ken Triscoll, EPTN, Nick Luta Patterson, Tema, Pasagiyo, you have to allow to look at Banit Sainak, Taikangat Sainak, Hanolinalu Nila Titako, Tapani, Sam, Ningigangi. With what we know right now, the best explanation is that the transmission occurred either outside of the mine or not between uh, our first presumptive and either of these two people simply because they had no uh, contact at the mine site uh, that could have accounted for the results that we got yesterday and the day before. <laughs> Siapa beli nelayan tak kuat sih buli nalu nak tahu lah tu tak malu tak kuat mak kuliah meju katilau semangin mati tap katilau semangin mati tap pani ojak aku nak beli mita yang mana lalu nak semangin nak tahu isman aku nengah nik tap pani aitu lalu tahu nengi gani. And when the staff, at the, the health staff at the mine, uh, talked more with people, they found that they had spent time together in a social setting as all of us do outside of work uh, a few weeks ago before their trips to the mine um, and so that's that link that we're wondering about right now thank you they go ha tiu lao ti lu yan na han na in tu le ren na ma ka na yak ti ta pa ni u ya ga na be me tu sa ga bigi kan ni lao ti lu gu tu sa ga kan ni tu sa ga bigi kan ni lao tu ti gu ta ko inu Ila katiman ng ata pinasa ako si Galay si Bunga gutap pa ang aula lang ni New York na abim. Queen of Equal Interpretation. The two presumptive positives. How many people were they in contact with, and how many are in isolation right now? Tako makupasagay yun ba yun na tulihat? 
Right now, the total number of contacts is too few to disclose. And that's, be, sorry, uh, just to clarify, that's because the mine has been doing a lot of work even before July 2nd, but they've done more to reinforce uh, the ability for people to do their work at the mine with minimal uh, times where they're in that two meter space for more than 15 minutes, so they've minimized the number of people who would be considered high risk contacts. Uh, in previous press conferences, you've said uh, five or less would be a number that's too small to disclose. Uh, would that be the case here? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, that, that's our, always our threshold, unless there's an element of risk to Nunavumia, like they could spread it to others. So we disclose when there's only one positive case of COVID-19 for contacts, for people under investigation, where there's no definite evidence of risk to other Nunavumia. We do not disclose unless it's more than five. Has there been any consideration of testing mine personnel before they leave for Nunavut instead of after? This gets back to the problem of false negatives with tests is that uh, all of these individuals were tested on arrival and initially negative and now positive um, and it wouldn't have mattered whether they were tested before they got on the plane to come to the mine or when they landed, we would have wound up in the exact same situation. And that gets back to the weaknesses of testing that we've discussed lots in the past few months. And that's why it's not just enough to focus on testing, but to use testing as part of a system that ensures and protects the health of all Nunavumiut. And this is more of an economic development question, but I think the finance minister can handle it. Uh, Mr. Hicks, I'm wondering, have the mines given any indication just how long they plan on paying Inuit staff to stay home and not be at the mine sites? Uh, to my knowledge, there's not a definitive timeline. Everything's so fluid right now, even today, uh, of, ha of having two additional cases brought forward changes the perspective on how fast to engage local employment back in the mine sites. So I, I applaud the mines for continuing to uh, provide uh, uh, pay uh, to the employees for not going to work as a health and safety measure. Uh, so I, I want to first acknowledge that. Uh, secondly, okay. there, sorry. Hangaku mga nalunasimang ito tamakwa si Jack Palayang inang ata 
And secondly, uh, with federal funding programs that are uh, available or still be in the process of being created, uh, we've been working with the Chamber of Mines for Nunavut and NWT uh, to help uh, lobby the federal government to provide supports. Uh, the majority of the federal programs announced to date do not fall within the mining sector. I know there was a, an, an announcement this morning on some tax measures, uh, but we do uh, work with our territorial colleagues uh, and the Chamber of Mines to work, continue to lobby the federal government and provide supports for northern mines. Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News. So, Dr. Patterson, just so that I'm absolutely clear about this, the two presumptive cases that you're talking about, they were not part of the contact tracing group that was connected to the presumptive case from last week? That's correct. They were not part of the contact group that was uh, identified uh, July 1st and 2nd around that first presumptive individual, or first individual with the presumptive results. Um, but then with further questioning, there was a, uh, a link from a couple of weeks or a week or two before that uh, positive test came back. July 1, May 2, Miluni. Dr. Patterson, when did you first find out about these two cases? Uh, we got the call about the very first one on the evening of the 13th, and then uh, we got the uh, second one yesterday. And when were the samples that were collected, when were they sent down for confirmatory testing? We got them yesterday, um, and they either went out for confirmatory testing either yesterday or today. And can you just clarify, like, exactly how many samples were sent down south? No, uh, there's one for each of the people that are known to have a presumptive positive, and then some tests for the, num for the contacts, and I can't uh, give that number. Have any of your health staff been sent to the mine? No. Thank Brown, CBC. Uh, I'm wondering if we can step back and, and talk about why it is that the mine workers are not required to isolate before they go to the mine still. Uh, I understand they're critical workers, but can we talk about why it is that they're not isolating? 
Elizabeth Brown, CBC Kunap, Jose Haratino, Nakis, Motaco, Yara Merbimo Palea, you know, to gain a hatare hanging manga at a colleague, the Canaya to you know, to gain a hatare hatilui. The purpose of isolation, the hubs in the south, is to prevent the uh, introduction of COVID 19 into remote, isolated communities. Uh, and by keeping the mine staff separate from the communities in the way that we're doing, uh, they, we are achieving that goal of preventing the introduction of COVID-19 into the communities. And I'll let Uli translate and I'll talk a bit more about that. People who are doing other uh, mine related work like prospecting and exploration who are going into the communities and staying there, they still, they they are also required to go through the isolation hubs. Uh, so it's uh, only when they can do their work in a way that does not come in, bring them into contact with the communities. Thanks. Did the government ask the mine to send Nunavut workers home, or was that a decision that the mine made itself, or was it in collaboration? Mine, sorry. sorry, Uli. Sorry. Um, the mines took that upon themselves earlier mm. in February, late February, early March, I think. Um, this, this presumptive case, uh, the, the mines are testing their workers, but it's my understanding that other critical workers who are coming in and out of communities are being monitored, they're answering questions, but they're not being tested. Is it possible that critical workers who are coming in uh, for other roles into communities could be bringing these kind of sorts of trace presumptive cases into communities already, like we're seeing at the mine? Yeah, it, is, it could happen. It, what we do to minimize that chance is we review everyone's work and travel history um, and the question comes back to what we talked about in March when we set up the hubs is, and the exemption uh, for critical workers is that the impact of not having that role filled uh, for two weeks would be too risky and have other impacts on the health besides the risk of uh, bringing COVID into territory. And then we do the work to minimize the chance of them spreading it if they were to be uh, asymptomatically spreading the virus. Well, 
why is it that you're choosing not to do this kind of testing for critical workers coming in and out of the territory when the corporations or the mine sites are choosing to make that testing available? Samalle tai meitit singela tita ko ja ne abe mehau ja sautit sa ne atuin nautit sidun na ja galuatin lugi. The problem is that a negative result doesn't mean that they don't have and won't develop the uh, an infection. And when and we've seen this when we do our contact tracing and and every other jurisdictions have run into this too. People can be tested on one day and be told the test is negative, and then go on about their life. They don't wear a mask, they don't practice distancing, and they can be sick for several days before they get tested again. It's human nature that you say, I don't have COVID, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and they're making the assumption that that negative test is, uh, they're putting more weight on a negative test than there really should be. And that's that whole problem of false negatives that we've been working so hard to avoid the impact of that. and jurisdictions that have switched from isolation, whether self-isolation or, or something like what we're doing, to swabbing people and then saying you're negative, you can, uh, you don't have to isolate, have seen cases getting and outbreaks being caused as a result of that. So. Um, the take-home message is you can't put too much stock in a negative result. And just to get back to the critical workers, and as the minister has reminded me, it's worth reminding everyone that there's restrictions on critical workers, not just in terms of who gets those exemptions, but also in the activities they can do. They're expected to isolate when they're not at work. Um, they're uh, expected to check in with their boss or their supervisor every day and immediately isolate and report to health if they develop symptoms. And especially for healthcare providers, they have to wear a mask when they're at work at all times for the 14, first 14 days that they're in territory. <laughs> The mine has it set, it set up right now so that because mine workers are critical workers and they're not isolating, Nunavut workers can't work at the mine um, and won't be able to work there for this season. Why is it that we're continuing to create a situation where Nunavut can't do their jobs and, and can't continue to do training and can't participate in, in the mine work that's happening? Tako <laughs> 
That's a good question, Beth, for a number of different factors. Uh, we have to really take a look at how we balance health and safety of Nunavut versus our economic impact as well. Uh, the mineral sector is one of our biggest GDPs uh, for Nunavut's economy, and we don't want to unnecessarily hinder that. So we've been very clear from the beginning that we're going to base our decisions on the best medical advice and the best medical experience that uh, we're continuing to learn. Uh, not just Nunavut, but all around the world, we're continuing to learn more and more about COVID-19. And I want, again, take the moment to applaud the mining sector for separating that. Uh, if we didn't do enough, then we would be guilty of not doing enough. Some people feel we're doing too much. I, I don't think we can do too much. Uh, we're uh, right now. History is proving uh, that the measures we're taking are working. Uh, at the same time, we have to make sure that we look out for Nunavut's interests. <laughs> Oops, so I get a lot of feedback from both sides of the of the argument. Uh, there are a lot of people in Nunavut that work at mines that want to get back to work. Uh, the the remuneration that they're getting right now isn't their full pay, uh, but they're also not working. Uh, they want to get back to work, but we need to make sure that we balance that with safe back to work, and that's where our whole Nunavut's path forward, we're going to be continuing to analyze these risks versus the, uh, the health and safety of Nunavut. <laughs> We're seeing with our construction workers that they are isolating before coming up to work in the communities. Presumably that would mean that laborers and communities are able to take part in construction or still be hired. Would there be a time or a benchmark where the mine would have to isolate its workers so that Nunavut workers could go, go back to work and participate in the economy here? See, that's a good comparison, Beth, when we're dealing with construction workers, as, as the example you gave, coming into the communities, working alongside with Nunavimut. Uh, any, any travel uh, in, in and out of the territory bears a little bit of risk. But at the same time, with the measures that we put into place for construction workers that are entering our communities, working side by side with Nunavut, that isolation has, is mandatory. Uh, but we have control over that because they are coming into the communities. At the from a business model standpoint, a lot of that would depend on the mining uh, company themselves to determine where that cost benefit measure would, where that line would be.
Megan Dooling, New Natsiak News. Uh, just to be clear, the mine is paying the workers who are in Nunavut or the government is paying them? Megan Dooling, New Natsiak News. I'm going to go to the government and I'm going to go to the government. Thanks. Uh, the individual mines are paying their workers, continuing to pay their workers. My next questions are for Dr. Patterson, please. Just to pick up on kind of what Beth was saying with essential workers uh, who aren't mine workers, who don't have to isolate, how confident are you that the workers are coming into communities, are following your orders to minimize contact and to check in with their bosses? Um. Nothing's 100%. There's always going to be people who don't follow the rules and recommendations, and we get, um, you know, we hear about that from uh, community members and other staff, and we follow up and work with the uh, exempted workers with educating them and explaining the requirements, and um, for the most part, that uh, has worked. Um, but. Uh, you know, there's no doubt that there have been people who have not followed the agreement that you know, they have to sign the they have to initial saying that they're going to uh, uh, follow those uh, rules that are in place. And it's not just critical workers; it's everybody who gets an exemption because they're it, the same uh, rules apply to people who are given exemptions for compassionate reasons or any other reason. Taken as oh, sorry, I spoke too long. Uh, yeah, did. Yeah. Taken as a whole, though, like when we when we look at the system of what we do to uh, measure the risk for exemptions, the isolation hubs, the keeping the mines separate from the communities, all of these actions and the work that Nunavumiut have done with distancing and separation has achieved the goal so far of keeping COVID-19 out of any of our communities. And so there are things that could work better and it's certainly a, a, a burden on individuals, but at the same time it is working to achieve that goal. <laughs> Thank you. 
Iluna tatang itu dah kanoi kanoi lelaki tu kisah maja bu tamak kuning awak sigi kat tanah mek kamalo kanoi gelu atel kat tanah mek taman nubat jual nak tike tike lelaki kuna itu acara tu kisah maja tu itu ilang awal tak awal tak ucap awak nak saya kat tak tu kalau ati ma tamak kalau rumah itu kor tu kisah maja kalau abu kisah ni taman tu mek nubat jual nang nineteen mek tike tele tici kita usi maju. So if there are other asymptomatic cases, like at the mine site, floating around in the communities, and you wouldn't know about it, how big of a deal is that? Tak kau lihat, sehingga kan ikut tak tahu yang itu juga nak bimbit tu, tapi mahap esok aja tu nak tu kan tu kita mana semua lalu tiga bil. It's a concern. It's uh, and it certainly um, it, it has it it has its risks. But it's impossible for for many of these jobs. It's impossible to keep them occupied with uh, if we require everybody to uh, isolate for 14 days. So that's why we have exemptions, but why we try to keep it to the bare minimum necessary. <laughs> How reliable do you think the results are from the mines testing machines? Um. They're reliable, like they're, they're uh, equivalent or close to the same as what we use. They're a different machine, but in terms of reliability, uh, they're the, the Dr. Kobinger, who's doing the work for the company, has a worldwide reputation in, in doing research and doing work with viruses. Uh, so uh, I think we can, certainly I'm comfortable saying that they're a presumptive positive. Um, the with their lab and our lab, the only reason we can't say confirmatory is that we haven't had the I think it's 15 positive results through those machines. Tanya kena yang tinggal yang nak tikul tak kovinjur nunak jual emami kau yang majau cak tu tak makun dengan cak masuk ni kau yang sakit tak sih meninganut dalam nak tahu sakit tak yang kena kibut tak makun asli tapi nak kau yang sak bing asli dalam nak tahu sih mengimat fifteen ni kisah ni dalam nak tahu sih majau hati lugu tapi mana dalam nak tahu cak sih mana nak tahu lagu nang mata. With that said. There's no test in the world that's 100% reliable. And even our first false positive came from a lab in the south that had done the work to deliver confirmatory results. And so I expect that there will be a small percentage of uh, samples from any lab that have an error in the results. And that's why we it's part of a system that's designed to do the work. Tapi manggilan itu nak jual lima minit, orang ini datang itu memang hundred percent minat orang yang semua orang nak tu kalau jangan ingat, tak maksud itu orang nak jual orang nak tu kalau nak tu kalau tak tu nak milih mak, tak mak kunungan. Tapi memang mana orang nak tahu dia kan nak tu kalau hak kau kau yang sak tahu itu mana buat. Ia ni yang itu memang tak maksud memang tak nak kalau waktu itu lagi kisah ni, tak mana datang itu memang pilih kerja situ ni lagi jauh tu orang nak kau yang saya kat mana. So how come you sent to confirm the results from the mine? How can you send them to the machines in Akaluit to confirm them instead of just sending them to a lab in the south right away? So malita ko na luna tao ga atil luga haluno tao nga hatang illa haluna ano tao nga hatak suti. We did both. Tamaki hatak tabo. At the same time. Ato chiko. Yeah, they sent the results to us. We tested them with our gene expert, and we sent the right remainder of the sample to the labs in the south to get tested. But we can't provide confirmatory results. Eh, tayo tamaki at tayo matamani. Gene expert, how is ako titino? How is ako tatagot? Amalo ame ako ng halo na ano? Ano lakti si tatagbo? So you would have done that no matter the results from your gene experts. 
Yes. Um, and just from my understanding, the first presumptive case arrived in the territory on June 23rd, and then the other round of people who just are presum presumed to be positive arrived on July 7th. And so what you believe is that they were in contact before June 23rd, and that's where this may have come from? That's the most likely explanation, and I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. But the main thing is, uh, until we know for certain, the mine, the staff in the mine, and uh, Department of Health staff are doing what's needed to ensure that there's no further transmission from these individuals. So we're operating under the assumption for now that these individuals are are still uh, could still transmit COVID-19 to other people, and taking every precaution to minimize the chance of further spread. With uh, over the last few months, we've learned around the world that individuals who've had COVID-19 can still shed uh, bits and pieces of the virus for many weeks or even months later, and that's uh, triggered some of those uh, studies in March and April that people were worried about reinfection and uh, uh, events like that happening that have turned out to be just you've still got bits and pieces of the virus that can be detected, uh, but that's not the same as saying that you're still in, infected or even infectious. It's just dead virus that your body's clearing out. Dead virus? Dead. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Would it ever be in the realm of possibility to have the system that we have now to exempt people from isolating and also have the same type of testing system that the mine has so they're immediately tested and then subsequently, meanwhile, also isolating? The only way we could do that is if we had true point of care testing where we could put a device in each and every health center across the territory and um, right now there's no device that's uh, produced and licensed for use in Canada that meets those criteria. <laughs> CBC. Um, because we, we've come to it, this is the second what? time we've. Can you speak up? This is the second time that we've come here to talk about presumptive cases at the mine. Is it likely that we will continue to see these sort of presumptive cases reported only at mine sites in Nunavut because we're not testing critical workers in the same way? 
Beth Brown, CBC, Kunitan, Iparilang, or Tubiligilang, or Taymark, Pasagi, or you have to me, Nova Jonah to have to me, or young Nerbin me. Taymark say, Naho, yes, after you have to have a hunting in Luna for me. Taymark, Naluna to have a halas you sober. Um, if we were to, if somebody were to bring, let's say, a, uh, an exempted worker brought COVID-19 into territory and started to spread it, we would start to see it because some people would develop symptoms, especially uh, people who are more vulnerable or more prone to illness. And we have yet to see any cases of COVID-19 in uh, in Nunavut outside of the mines. So um, yes, it's possible, but we're doing all that other work to minimize that risk. And we think it's in balance with the risk of bringing COVID into the territory. How you similar yak to tell what that Sermatic civil leg of Narayaming in the civil wagon, Kisan Harris among in a Tahanu to Hatasima Unifilo after Mitamako, Serma, Bilsara in the say, Hanim Masara in the say, Hanim Matchauti in the say, young at a solitary man, how you long in a Tanova John of Tasima Uni, Nunavumi, Uyarna Bils, Silatani, a singing in the low Hanuil or the Harat, Tamana Tiki Palla. Thank you.